Hi, my name is Kent Hansen and I'm a Qt software developer. Today I'd like to show you the Qt script debugger that's new in Qt version 4.5. Qt script provides a simple, powerful way of adding scripting capabilities to any Qt application. However, prior to version 4.5, there hasn't been a simple way of debugging applications that use Qt script. In 4.5, we're introducing the Qt script tools module. This module provides a debugger that you can embed into any application that uses Qt script. In other words, the debugger is not a standalone tool, but more like a widget that you add to your own application. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, you have to add the script tools module to your QMake project file. Second, you include the Qt script tools header, and then you're ready to create your debugger. You create your script engine, just like you've always done. But now you also create a script engine debugger object. And you attach this debugger to the script engine. Now what's going to happen by default is that whenever there's an uncaught exception in the script engine, or a debugger statement is encountered in the script, then the debugger is going to pop up in its own window. The existing Qt script examples have been modified to integrate this new debugger. So I'd like to show you one of the examples so you can see what it looks like. So here we have the Qt script Tetrix example, which now has a debug button. So we can start the game. Now when you click on the debug button, the debugger pops up at the next script statement and evaluation is going to be paused so we can expect, inspect the current runtime environment. Um, here we see the various components of the debugger. In the center here we have the code view which shows the currently executing script. Then on the left there is a loaded scripts view which shows the scripts that are loaded into the engine. You can see which functions the scripts define. Then on the right there is a stack view which shows the stack frames for the current execution and below that there is a locals view which shows the local variables of the currently selected stack frame. So in other words the scope chain and the this object for the current frame. Again on the left here we have the breakpoints view which shows the currently set breakpoints at the bottom we have the console which provides an interactive interpreter that you can use to inspect the runtime environment and to control the debugger. So if you like text-based interfaces then knock yourselves out. Then there's also a debug output. The um, arguments to print statements are going to end up in this view. There's an error log which contains the uncaught exceptions that have occurred in the script engine. At the top here we see the toolbar which gives us several ways of controlling further execution of the script. We can choose to just continue running. We can step into the next statement. We can step over or we can step out of the current function. We can also run to the cursor, the current cursor position, or we can run until a new script has been loaded. So I'd like to show you just how you can set a breakpoint and how that affects evaluation. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here whenever we have managed to complete one or more lines in the game. So I set a breakpoint at this point. Um, you see that it's, it gets added to the breakpoints view. Uh, if you want you can also associate a condition with the breakpoint uh, which can be just an arbitrary condition that's going to be evaluated and the debugger will only stop execution if the condition evaluates to true. You can also specify an ignore count which means that the debugger will ignore the breakpoint, let's say, the first three times that it's encountered, but we 
we'll just leave it off for now. You can also specify that the breakpoint should be single shot, um, which means that if it's single shot, it's just going to be deleted. The breakpoint will be deleted as soon as it's triggered. You can also see how many times a certain breakpoint has been hit. And if you want, you can just disable the breakpoint um, for now and quickly enable it again when you want to have it trigger. So we enable it, then we just choose continue. And then I'm just going to show you some Tetris skills. Of course, this whole video is just a poor excuse for being able to play more Tetrix because that's usually what I do most of the day. Oh, come on. Yeah. It's so slow. Okay. Um. Yeah, there we go. So there the debugger pops up. Um, we can, um, if we want, we can hover the mouse over an e expression to see what the value actually is. So we see the current score, for instance. You can, of course, also inspect variables here on the right. Um, and we can choose to step here. And that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, hopefully this will make it a lot easier for you guys to be able to just quickly debug what's going on in your, uh, in your scripts. Um, you can also check out, there's a more detailed reference available in the documentation. Um, I would also like to mention that you can customize the way the debugger is added to your application. So now we saw that the debugger is in its own window, um, but ha perhaps you just want to have some of the components. For instance, you just want the interactive interpreter. Um, then you can also do that, or you can customize how the, the components are configured, because by using the widget function in the QScript engine debugger class, you can get access to the individual widgets of the debugger. So essentially, for instance, you can um, request the console widget and just uh, make it part of your own custom layout. Uh, same for the actions. You can use the action function, uh, if, for instance, if you want to create a custom toolbar for the debugger. Okay, that's it. I hope you have fun and that you find the debugger useful. See you later.